Hi there investors, Dan from New to Property here. Thank you so much for joining me for yet another video in the New to Property range. If you are new here, it'd be great to have you part of the New to Property community like so many others. Make sure you go below, subscribe, click the bell to get notified every time a new video goes live on the New to Property channel. Within this video, I'm going to be giving you some guidance, some hints and tips on what you can claim for within your buy to let property investing limited company business. Just before we do get started, I just need to make it very clear that I'm not FCA approved, meaning I can't give you advice. So this video is simply for guidance to give you some ideas to take some bullet points and some notes away to be able to speak to your property investing specialist accountant. First of all, let's start with what is a business expense? HMRC class, a business expense, as an expense that is wholly and exclusively for your business purposes only. So let me give you an idea of some of the things that you can claim for within your buy to let property investing business now you've set yourself up within a limited company. You can claim business travel for travel that is essential for your business to operate and where you're responsible for the cost of that travel. And the travel must be to and from a temporary workplace. So as an example, an investor traveling from London to Nottingham on the train to go and view some potential buy-to-let properties that they're gonna be purchasing through their limited company can claim that train ticket as a business expense. If that investor had a car, they'd be able to claim business mileage. And business mileage can be claimed at 45 pence a mile up to 10,000 miles and then 25 pence a mile after that. And that includes the fuel costs and wear and tear on the vehicle. And it's important to keep a mileage log of where you've come from to where you're going just in case HMRC do want to go through your accounts. Now that same investor could claim accommodation costs if they were required to stay overnight. So for example, they had viewings spread across two days. The investor will need to keep the receipts of the cost of the accommodation and also the accommodation needs to be reasonable and not excessive. And during this trip, subsistence can also be claimed for. This is the food and drink that you would consume whilst being away from your home on that business trip. Again, it needs to be reasonable, not excessive, and you do need to keep the receipts as well. Office costs are another claimable expense. So do you need any apps for your business? Have you got any software needs at all? Have you got the use of a virtual assistant? Have you got any pens or stationery, any paper, etc.? And just while we're on the office, you can actually claim up to £150 per person, per employee, within your business for an annual Christmas party. But make sure you don't go over the £150 mark because if you do, you can't claim any of the amount. And work clothing can be claimed for if you need safety clothes for work or you wear a uniform or you've got some branded clothes. What you can't claim for is anything that has duality. So that means you can't claim for a suit to go to work or go to a meeting in because you could also wear that suit for personal use as well. So if we go a little bit more related now to a specific property business, what are the things that you can claim for within that portfolio of yours? You can claim for all general repairs and maintenance within a property, but what you can't claim for is improvements to the property. So for example, you'll be swapping a kitchen, an old laminate worktop for a granite worktop. You can claim for water rates, gas, electricity, council tax, if you're operating, let's say, a HMO where you pay the bills yourself, or even for a standard single let property when you've got a slight void between tenancies and you get a bill for the electricity, the council tax and the gas. You can claim financial costs such as insurance and bank charges. You can claim the costs of services, so let's say for example a cleaner or maybe a gardener, and of course letting agency and management fees. You can claim for your accountancy fees, ground rents, service charges if you have them on your properties, and any training related to your business. And this is where you're training within the business that you're already in. So for example, you already have read a book on buy to let investing, maybe my book, um, and then you decide to take on additional training and you get yourself a one-on-one -on -one buy to let mentor. Because you're expanding and growing that knowledge within your business, it's claimable. 
If you decided to train in floristry, you wouldn't be able to claim because it's not directly related to the business and it's not expanding and growing your knowledge base. Advertising is also claimable. So whether that be advertising for a tenant to, to come and live and let the property. Alternatively, if, we're, if you're running Facebook ads for your business or printing leaflets. And here's an interesting one. If you work from home and you have an office within your residential property, you can actually claim four pounds a week working from home. You can also calculate that yourself over the amount of bills, etc., and the time that you spend within your office in your property. However, be very careful because you don't want to be using that office 100% of the time because that would then mean that you've got an office within your residential property. When you then come to sell your residential property, you're going to have some slight complications with capital allowance as your business has a presence within that residence. So make sure that you use your home office or maybe call it a study that you use for reading books, getting educated and you part use it for leisure and business but that's definitely a one to speak to your accountant about. You can also claim for any tools that you need for your business so if you're doing a BRRR model and renovating the property you can claim for your equipment that you need and that equipment also extends to things like let's say laptops or if you need a camera and also fixed assets that you're going to be holding for more than a year and they're going to bring an economic value to your business however you must notify and let your accountant know when you pass off sell or those assets are no longer being used or no longer in the business. You can also claim for your internet and phone and because it's very difficult to separate personal usage from business uses, usage on your internet you would be able to claim the full amount and that also goes for a phone as well. So say that I'm the only director and uh, employee within my business it would actually be cheaper for me to have and claim for my personal phone within the business than it would for me to get a business line. And of course, my sole job as the director is in to ensure that the business is running the most efficient, effective way and stays profitable. So HMRC will understand this and allow my personal phone to go through as my business expense. And then I can also claim if I have any medical costs through injuries that have been sustained solely through the activity within my business. And of course, the big one, the grand finale, and I'm sure why every one of you is investing within a limited company, is that you can claim the full cost of your mortgage payments. Okay, so that's given us a good list and something to go to our accountants with. However, what is it that you can't claim for within your limited company? And this is really easily summarized in one sentence, really. You can't claim for anything except the phone that we've spoken about and the internet that we've spoken about that the expense wasn't solely incurred for your property rental business. You can't claim for personal clothes, you can't claim for groceries, you can't put your own council tax through. You can't claim for anything that can be seen to have duality, meaning that let's say for example you need a suitcase to go on a business trip overnight. However, HMRC will see it that that suitcase could also be used on your family summer holiday, which means it's got duality and it isn't solely for the purpose of your business. Please remember this video is simply for guidance. You need to go away, have a chat with your property specialist accountant to clarify what it is that you should and shouldn't be putting through as your business expenses. Thank you so much for watching all the way to the end. If you have enjoyed this video, please pop below, give us a like and drop me a comment to say hi. I love to hear from the people watching my videos. Thank you so much and I'll see you again next time. At New to Property, we provide guidance and support for new and experienced investors in the form of mentorship. We offer a six month one on one program and an online course. Both services are designed to guide you through every step of the process and to assist you in buying a safe, solid, sound and secure investment property.